Hey, this is John Smith with Extra Hop Networks, and today I want to talk a little bit about uh, some really cool Splunk integration that we've got. So within the Extra Hop platform, um, for a long time we used what was an elastic record store where we would store our wire data transactions. And where that's valuable is a lot of solutions don't log, right? And, and one of the challenges with a SEM or with forwarders is that they have to be configured, right? And anything that can be configured can be unconfigured. And attackers know that there's a SEM. They know that there's syslogging. So that positions them to kind of come in and, and build countermeasures. And we see that with some of the malware that will either disable the EDR or disable the forwarders. Or if once a system's been rooting, they rooted, they can shut the logging off. With Extra Hop uh, and RevealX, obviously we're working in a covert position. Uh, the attacker really doesn't know that we're there, and so we're in a position to see things. So we're collecting records off the wire based from a mirror. So there's nothing to dis disable. If you've got an IP address, you really can't opt out of RevealX surveillance. So that's one of the very powerful ways that we can augment and complement your EDR and your SEM solutions as part of your, your cybersecurity triad. You know, EDR, SEM, and of course the RevealX NDR platform. So you also have challenges with things like IoT or things that don't log. And then in addition to that, and even more importantly, there are certain protocols like SIFs, or uh, LDAP and in some cases Kerberos, where the Windows event logs just aren't very sufficient. In the in the case of SIFs, it really doesn't log at all, right? So there really isn't a lot to get, you know, in terms of logging. But there's quite a bit of information through. Uh, there's quite a bit of information that you can derive directly off the wire. So those are some th some of the cases where you might use NDR, probably lead with NDR, and then fill in the blanks where, where your EDR and your and your uh, SIM are, are, are not giving you full visibility. So again, what we do is we take that wire data, in addition to writing the metadata, we write the transactions to what's called a, a record store. In fact, if you come here, I'll show you one that's got some data in it. Uh, let's see here. Um, one second. Excuse me. So here's an instance of outbound traffic, right? So these are records that are that are being uh, written to the to the back end uh, Elastic uh, um, platform. However, in this particular case, uh, a few versions ago, we started supporting Splunk as the record store back end. So now you can weave into your SIM all of the transactions on the wire, including those that are for IoT devices that don't have or can or cannot configure forwarders. Um, protocols that don't log particularly well, or those new systems, right, that come up and nobody's bothered to install the forwarder on them. So this gives you some of that visibility into those wire data transactions. In this case, though, instead of using my um, Elastic backend, I'm actually using the Splunk backend. In fact, and, and also we offer a little PCAP link here where you can also click here and actually go to the packets and download the PCAP files. But what I want to do is I want to show you how you can do that with your Splunk platform. So I've got a trigger that I've built called Suspect DNS. And what I'd like to do is walk you through how giving you direct access to PCAPs would work. So again, I'm using a Splunk backend and not an Elastic backend. And here's the trigger. Um, that. That one is Shannon's Entropy. This Here it is. So I've got a list of some top-level domains that I want to track, right? And um, in this case, now we'll put a bullseye uh, in the record store so that you can just click directly. And you saw me do that earlier with some of the other records, right? And you saw me, um, here, let's, let's go back to that. So we offer a bullseye here, but let's say you don't want to use the Extra Hop console or you want to have the data readily available in Splunk, you don't want to pivot over to another console, um, then what you can do is send that PCAP data or create a hyperlink to the PCAP data within your Splunk environment. It's been a while since I've used Splunk a lot, but, um, but um, I'll show you what that looks like here. So here's an example of, of a detector, a suspect DNS query, and here's all of my packets. And, or I'm sorry, these are all of the, the metadata records. But here, because I can't deliver the bullseye to Splunk, what I've done is deliver a hyperlink. So now here in the search uh, app, I'm not able to, do, to click this. However, if you come over here, we've actually set this up. 
and I'll show you what this looks like. We've actually set up a link here, right? So this value for this particular row is what is used as a hyperlink. And so this allows you to just click that row and then download the PCAP directly. And I'll show you real quickly what that looks like. So here I've got a dashboard um, and I'm just gonna do a live one for you real quick. Now this will take a few seconds to, uh, to, um, to populate, but let's come here and I'm gonna look for a dot RU, right? So, uh, cause I know that will trigger the alert. So let's find one here. Hold on. This is a really big malware list. One second here, let me just refresh it. All right, so here is a .ru. So we're gonna look at Bak, Bakuzbug, Bakuzbug.ru. So real quickly, I'm gonna come over here to my shell and I'm gonna just do an NS lookup, server 1.1.1.1, and I'm gonna look up this domain. Now it's okay that I got an NX domain. I just want to look at the DNS requests. One of the reasons I like to look at DNS is that it positions you to be able to stop a threat very, very early, right? If you can stop something at the point of looking at a DNS answers file and getting the offending IP that's about to, uh, to, um, that's about to be accessed, then you can a lot of times smother out a threat long before it ever gets started. So there I did get some, uh, some, some uh, IP addresses back for this malicious domain. So now with that, if I refresh this, uh, it may take a few times, um, but if I refresh this, I should eventually get some records in here. Now the backend records are in this case Splunk. So here you see a myriad of the previous domains that I was looking up. And in fact, if you look here, you'll see there's some right there. Let me see if we can refresh this. And there you see them, right? So uh, bakuzbook.ru was looked up. We see the server that I tried to use it with. Now, if I wanted to provide the DNS answers and show you the IPs that, that were offered back, I could do that. I could do a threat intelligence check against the IPs that were coming back and then add that as context to this. But more importantly, what you can do now that you've got this dashboard, you can just click here and it will open up the PCAP file. And if you look here, you'll see that we have the DNS query, right? So this takes you directly to the PCAPs. If we look at this, actually, and I would love some help on it, but if you look here, you can see that we could tie together any number of tuples for, this, for that PCAP search. So, you know, I would love uh, to see how other people, if someone has a, a suggestion of a really good help file for doing hyperlinks, I would love some advice on it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bang on it using the infinite monkey algorithm and see if I can get it a little bit easier. But ultimately, any client IP and server IP, if you have any IP address, you can trigger a PCAP search on any dashboard, right, if that makes sense. So again, here's my Splunk. Uh, these are my wire data transactions that may uh, otherwise be, you know, absent from your SIM, especially DNS, because it's very, very expensive to log those. Well, here we've set some conditions like .rus, like .link, like .ruq, you know, the malicious top-level domains, and we've logged those. So instead of millions of records, we have dozens of records, and then of course we're giving you that direct to PCAP pivot where you can grab those PCAP files immediately. Thanks for watching. Again, this is John Smith, and this is some really cool Splunk and ExtraHop integration. Thanks.